I'm going to be talking to you today about protecting your investments, investing for older Americans. So first, I've got to give this disclaimer. Since I do work for a government agency, the SEC's Office of Investor Education and Advocacy is providing this service, this information as a service to investors. This presentation is not a statement of official SEC policy, a legal interpretation, or investment advice. You may ask me something, and I may give you my personal opinion, and that's why we have this disclaimer avail uh, available so that you can to feel free to ask me anything that you can. I may not be able to answer because we can't give investment advice, but what I'm here to do is help you make uh, better decisions, uh, help the people you care for make better decisions, and avoid becoming victims of investment fraud. So what we're going to cover today is overview of the SEC, strategies for smart investing, and tips to avoid fraud. Uh, the SEC was created as a result of the stock market crash of 1929. At that time, uh, people were making investment opportunities available to other people, and there was no recourse when there was uh, fraud involved. Let's say somebody offered you an investment opportunity, and they made all of these promises. The investment went south, and what recourse did you have? This is what happened in the 20s, and we ended up with the stock market crash of 1929, the Great Depression, and Congress felt that there needed to be an agency that uh, had federal securities laws to help the investing public to make sure that our markets work properly. So that was uh, the creation of our agency. I am an attorney with the Miami Regional Office of the SEC, but we are represented throughout the country with our home office being in Washington. So we've got a, a website in addition to our SEC website. It's called investor.gov. It was created by our Office of Investor Education and Advocacy, and there's a wealth of information on that website. Uh, introduction to investing, financial tools and calculators, protecting your investments, and additional resources. And I'll be talking throughout the presentation about the different things that are available to you on our website. So our mission is to protect investors, maintain fair, orderly, and efficient markets, and facilitate capital formation. And one of the ways we protect investors is pro by having uh, presentations like this, where we provide you with knowledge and, and information so that you can make informed investment decisions. Okay. Strategies for smart investing. So all investments have risk. Um, when people offer you an investment opportunity and they say it's risk-free, that should raise a red flag because all investments have risks. Uh, there are steps you can take to manage your risk. Um, your risk tolerance may be different than your risk tolerance. And one way to do this is by asset allocation and diversification. And these are two ways to avoid putting all of your investment eggs in one basket because if you fall and you crack all the eggs, there goes the investment. So it's good, it's smart uh, investing to have investments in different vehicles um, so that you spread your risk. So this is just a, a chart of different investment types depending on your risk tolerance and your age. Uh, when Generally, when you're younger, you have uh, the ability to take more risk in your investments because you have plenty of time to make up for losses. Um, I was just at a, giving a presentation before this presentation, and somebody said, you know, when is it a good time to, to stop being aggressive and move into safer investments? And really, there is no magic answer. There is no best time because the best time for you is not necessarily the best time for you because everyone has different strategies, different risk tolerance, different things happening in their life which affect their risk tolerance. But if you want to lower your risk, you invest in things like a bank account, barely pays interest if any, CDs, money market. Bonds are a little bit uh, more in the middle higher returns than cash, and those can be government, municipal, corporate, and bond funds. And then the riskier stock have the chance of higher returns, and those are individual stock investments and stock funds. And when you invest in individual stocks, there's many, many sectors that you can invest in. And that's a good way to, to spread your risk. But the higher the return, the higher the risk. The lower the return, the, the, the lower the risk. But it's a personal decision uh, that it's different for everyone. Let 
I'm sorry, this moves very quickly. So this is a great uh, statistic, financial fraud prevalence. More than eight in 10 people are solicited for potentially fraudulent offers. 50 billion per year is lost to fraud. And like I said at the beginning of the presentation, this uh, audience is senior caregivers, seniors, but anybody could be the victim of fraud. But we do find a lot of cases that we file at the SEC where the victims are seniors. Um, maybe people think they're an easier target. Uh, it's a different community. They're, they're more polite when people call them on the phone. Maybe some seniors are perhaps living alone and they get this phone call offering them a great investment opportunity and they're happy to talk to somebody and listen to them. But remember that more than eight in 10 are solicited for potentially fraudulent offers. So these are five red flags of investment fraud. Uh, if somebody calls you offering uh, an investment opportunity um, or you meet somebody at an event, you have to make sure that they are registered. So a red flag would be they're unregistered or unlicensed sellers. Those are a lot of the cases that we find. Uh, the people that are selling the investment opportunity are, are unlicensed. I mentioned a website that we have. It's called investor.gov. And on that landing page, you can type in the name of the person who's making you the offer and you will get results showing if the person is registered, what firm they are with, their employment history, any disciplinary action. And these are things that you must ask yourself before giving your money to somebody uh, for an investment opportunity. So check the person out. You can ask the person, are you licensed? If they say, I don't need to be, that's a lie. Because if you sell uh, investment opportunities, securities, you need to be licensed. Promises of high returns with little or no risk. Remember I said there's nothing that's no risk at all, but a lot of time these promoters say, you're going to make $50,000 on this in, in two months. No risk. It's no risk. It's a lie. But these fraudsters are excellent at what they do, and they, they work on your weaknesses. Um, I will give you an example of... You know, one case that I worked on, a, a, well, he was a registered broker, called uh, an elderly lady, and he said, Nana, oh, I'm not your grandmother. You sound just like my grandmother. Let me tell you, I've got this great investment opportunity. I was just calling my grandmother to tell her about it, but you sound just like her, and I'd, I'd love to you know, let you in on it because you just sound so sweet and I, I just miss my grandmother, but let me tell you all about it. And, you know, before the phone call was over, Federal Express was at her door collecting a $10,000 check before she had a chance to call her kids. Uh, so you've got to tell the people that you care about that are elderly, you just can't be such a nice guy anymore. Uh, that these things could happen. This was a real case that I worked on. It was a spinoff of the Wolf of Wall Street case. Um, it was called Biltmore Securities and it was out of Boca. Uh, some of the brokers from Wolf of Wall Street um, were, I guess, tired of living in New Jersey and wanted to see what it was like to live in South Florida. And they opened a firm uh, in Boca called Biltmore Securities. And a lot of their victims were um, senior citizens. And they don't care that they're asking the senior citizen to, uh, you know, dip into your retirement savings. It's okay because you're going to make so much money. And you always wanted to give your grandson that gift. And now you can do it or your child, you know, promises of high return with little, little or no risk should raise a red flag. Pressure to buy quickly had cases where people, you know, are on the phone saying, you know, I got 10 people waiting, make this investment because you want to miss out. You want to be the loser that misses out. And they're aggressive with you. Uh, in my, the case that I worked on, we found, um, comeback scripts. So if a man said to the person on the other line, I, I got to talk to my wife about this. Well, who wears the pants in your family? And then all of a sudden the guy's like, that's true. She can't tell me what to do. Well, I've got, I got to make this investment. He's got 10 people on the line. And the next thing you know, he's made the investment. When we get the cases, the money's usually been spent. If you think that these fraudsters are going to really invest your money in what they say they're going to invest your money in, it may not even exist the product that they're talking about. 
That is not correct. When we get the cases, we find out that the money has gone to lavish uh, expenses and things that you can't get back. Free meals. Um, nothing is really free. Uh, I'm sure that you see in the newspapers um, an opportunity to get, you know, red lobster, come for your free meal. And people feel like if they take a free meal from somebody, they've got to listen to what that person, you know, you got to be polite, right? You took a lobster, you got to listen to what they're selling. They're not just trying to give you a free meal and goodbye. They want to sell you something. So if you are going to accept this free meal offer, be ready with your response when they ask to you to purchase something and you know, say no. And red flags in financial professionals' background, there are a lot of people who represent themselves as um, senior financial experts. You can ask the person, what do you mean by that? Oh, well, you know, we know what investment seniors should be in. Uh, question that. Ask questions. And if the person is hesitant in answering the questions, this is not somebody you want to deal with. Um, we were both attorneys. It took us years to get um, designations of Juris Doctor. Um, I've seen cases, one case that really was terrible, where somebody had HSG after their name. And when in testimony we said, well, what does that stand for? High school graduate. But, you know, you've got the right to ask. But if you see somebody's name with lots of initials behind it, you might be super impressed and that's what they're counting on that you think that they have all of this wealth of knowledge like we need to take continuing legal education credits to maintain our license a doctor you don't want the doctor to get his degree and never be up on you know new innovations in medicine so you must look into the financial professionals background and ask the questions if they're hesitant to answer don't deal with them Three ways to avoid fraud, ask questions, research every investment opportunity thoroughly. So when they say you're running out of time, you got to invest now, pass up, uh, conduct a background check on the investment, on the individual. And you can do that on our website, investor.gov. So persuasion tactics of fraudsters, I've mentioned some of them, Fant phantom riches, dangling the prospect of wealth. Um, you know, your neighbor may be driving a Maserati and you say, well, how did you, how did, how did this happen? Oh, well, I invested with the Dunkington fund and you can do it too. Well, they're dangling phantom riches, source credibility, claiming to be with a reputable firm or to have a special credential or expertise. You can check on that scarcity, creating a false sense of urgency by claiming limited supply, reciprocity, the free lunch and social consensus leading you to believe that other savvy investors have already invested. Example, in my case, like that was the offshoot of Wolf of Wall Street, one of the products they were selling, part of their script was that Warren Buffett had invested in, in, in this stock. Now, I would like to know, I would like to copy Warren Buffett's investments to a T. That doesn't happen. Nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody knows what are great investments, what are bad investments. But if you do research, you can make an informed investment decision. And if you look out for these persuasion tactics that fraudsters use, that can protect you from becoming a victim. So SEC resources, we've got our website, investor.gov. Um, you can get a lot of information there. Maybe somebody's offering you an annuity. They make you feel stupid. You don't know what an annuity is. Don't invest. You go on our website and you look up what is an annuity. Uh, we have cases where people said, geez, had I Googled the investment? I mean, now we all have the opportunity to use computers. They would have found out that the investment was a scam. So you've got to do your homework, but there's a lot of information on our website. We've also got a lot of um, literature. Um, senior specialist designations, what do they mean? These are one-pagers, guide for seniors, how to protect yourself, uh, the questions you should ask about your investments, and these are available for free on our website. And um, I think people learn from other people's mistakes, and it's good to hear about what people do and don't do uh, because we just want to protect investors by giving you the tools that you need to make informed investment decisions. Um, 
other alerts uh, include crypto investment scams. Um, you all heard about Kim Kardashian, the case that we brought against her, I think it was last week or the week before. Um, you would want to know before you're investing in a crypto uh, deal if the person is really an investor or if they're being paid uh, to promote something. Um, but there are a lot of alerts on our website. This just moves too fast for me, but I'm trying to get to my last slide, which gives you my contact information. There we go. So my office, like I said, is in Miami. We are responsible for Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. And we offer investor assistance to anyone who calls. If it's easier, you can send an email to miami at sec.gov and we'll get back to you. If we don't know the answer to your question, at least we can lead you to the right person. Uh, we cannot offer investment advice because... We can't do that. What's right for you may not be right for you, but we can provide you with information and things to think about. If you call us regarding something that we might have an alert on, we provide that to you uh, as a way to help you make a, a better decision. And I have left uh, the group with some um, brochures uh, for seniors that I think you'll find useful. And if there's anything that we can ever do for you, um, please contact us. We want to protect the investing public so that the SEC can continue with its mission of, you know, protecting investors and making the markets work properly. So thank you for your time. We'll reserve a few minutes at the end for questions, but I'll pass it on to my co Good afternoon, everyone. I am Tandela Brown, and I work with Adult Protective Services. And I've been with Adult Protective Services now 30 years. Yeah, I said that too. <laughs> but I'd be remiss, first of all, for not thanking Asian and Area for inviting Adult Protective Services to this forum to speak before you. And it's really a privilege and a pleasure to be here. But I first want to say to you all is I want you all to give yourselves a round of applause because this is service. This is service. Everyone that spoke earlier and for you all being here, this is service because service is providing service to someone else. Martin Luther King said that you don't have to be a, a poet, a great poet. You don't have to be a neuroscientist. You don't have to be a great football player and you don't have to be a celebrity because service is definitely determined by greatness. And I truly believe that. And that is why I'm here today. I am not an attorney. However, I have been, like I said, I've been with Department of Children and Families for 30 years now. And I've been working with Adult Protective Services now for 15 years. And it's been an interesting journey, I might say, because I deal with a lot of families. I see dynamics and definitely I have dealt with fraud. There are scammers out there that are preying on adults, the elderly. And COVID, I do believe that they became a little bit emboldened. They got a little bit bold about what they wanted to do. They just decided that, hey, I can make an easier call because now COVID has made it so easy for us to pray upon someone because now we have people that are feeling grief about loss of family because they have no connection. They're isolated. And because they're isolated, they may not be getting the interaction, the social interaction of somebody's testimony to say, hey, I was just scammed. Someone just took advantage of me. But I'm here today to share some knowledge to you and just some simple tips, just some simple things about there are some scams that are out there that I want to make you aware of. And definitely that's what Adult Protective Services does, is that we are concerned about the adults, the vulnerable adults in Broward County. And it's our mission is to partner with local communities to, to bring resiliency within families and definitely protecting our adults and lowering the risk of anybody being exploited, neglected, or abused. So let me go forward. And 
And if it don't move in a second, I'm going to move on with it. Because <laughs> you know I can't. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, don't worry. We got to be a team. Not that I was good. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Okay, don't worry. Oh. That's fine. So, a vulnerable adult. That's fine right there. A vulnerable, see, teamwork makes the dream work no matter what you do. Teamwork makes the dream work, okay? So, as a vulnerable adult, a person is 18 years of old who has an ability to perform normal activities of daily living to provide for his or own care. Protection is prepared due to mental, emotional, sensory, long-term, or developmental disability or dysfunction or brain damage or infirmities of aging. So that means we deal with anyone that's over the age of 18. Yeah. And if you can go forward for me. And our definition of exploitation is to use or obtain a victim's funds. And I really don't like calling anyone a victim. You know why? Because nobody likes to be called a victim. Am I right? Do you want to be called a victim? No. But what I do like to call, and I think that is a, a much easier term, I like to say a person of my concern. Because I don't see you as a victim. I see you as a person of concern. Because you could be my mom, my dad, my aunt anybody in my family and you are my family once you enter my caseload I'm concerned about you so it says any person to obtain a victim's funds assets or property by a person who stands in a position of trust and confidence through deception or intimidation with the intent to temporarily or permanently deprive the victim of the funds, assets, or property for the benefit of someone other than not my victim, but my personal person of concerns. The action must be by the alleged perpetrator is directly attributable to exploitation and the result is the loss of the victim. And as Lisa explained earlier, these persons that are scamming, they don't care about your loss. And I've had cases where someone was informed about funds, a fundraiser, and in this fundraiser, and it was during COVID, and because he thought that he was not going to make it through COVID, he gave away his life savings. And then once he realized that, oh my goodness, I have made a terrible mistake, he contacted law enforcement, Adult Protective Services got involved, but because he gave the money over, Adult Protective Services really couldn't do anything. However, law enforcement, because we called law enforcement, now they can start a criminal case and start doing an investigation. And we had to make contact with that alert, alleged perpetrator. We had to gather documents from our so -called, my so-called person of concern. I had, to con I had to gather financial statements, whether it was credit card reports. He just did not, not only did he give away his life savings, he actually gave permission for this gentleman to use his credit cards. The person spent $20,000 at Home Depot, like really? Like really? You didn't care about this person? This person is on Social Security. That is very limited income. The gentleman is only receiving Social Security only $1,100. $1 so after he pays his condo association fee, his light bill, his water bill, and gets some groceries, how much do you think he has? Nearly nothing. So it is very important that when someone comes to you about giving up your money so easily, you, please, talk to a trusted friend. Talk to legal counsel. But talk to someone, talk to a banking officer. Anyone that's in your circle, talk to them. Because they may be able to say something like, hey, did you ask this question? Because truth never is bothered by questions, but a lot is. 
lie will sidestep. A lie will try to not answer certain questions. But truth doesn't mind a question ever. So be very, very careful about what you do. So I talked about sources of verification that we have to use. And as I said, in statements, we have witnesses um, from, our, from the victim itself of what occurred, what was the event, the detailing the events. We use bank statements, financial statements. We will call law enforcement. And if we see that it is so-called alleged perpetrator has done this before, then we're going to go. We're going to seek it even further. Because, you know, one time, okay, second time, something happened. Something, something happened. And when your financial statement shows what's going on, then law enforcement gets involved, and then they have their detectives go out and to meet and gather additional information. And when the detectives determine that there is something criminal, then they will forward that information to the state attorney's office. So it is very important that you include your family, a friend, someone that you trust to share that information to. Because like I said, they will be able to say, hey, did you think about this? Did you ask this question? Even phone messages, believe it or not, as I said, scammers have become very emboldened and they don't think anybody's gonna, you know, think about the phone messages. But they do come in handy. You right, laugh. That's right. They think like, hey, they're not gonna say, they're not gonna think of their phone messages in that moment. So use, make sure you keep track of everything that you're doing. It is so important. Ways to protect yourself, as I said before, confer with a trusted family member, a friend, a legal counsel, or a financial institution. Put up safeguards on your bank accounts. Maybe you want to set up a certain amount to say, if this amount is spent in one day, contact me. Please contact me. Because I don't want to lose no money today, tomorrow, any other day. Okay? Arrange for, like I said, arrange for limited account oversights. All this is so important. The scammers have, like I said, have become very emboldened because of COVID, that people are isolated. They are scared. They don't want to share information. So no, I, now I've got you. You're not willing to share. Go forward. So I want to report to you that with the Florida Abuse Hotline, this is our phone number. It is 1-800-96-ABUSE, or you can do 1-800-962-2873. We have our telephone line for the deaf. You can use that, which is 1-800-453-5145. We also have a fax number, 1-800-914-004, and we also do reports online. So there are many ways that reports can be filed with Adult Protective Service. And if you're wondering what happens, if you're wondering what happens when we get how we receive a report, how it all it starts is, is this. Someone can call to the hotline. And when they call to the hotline, they can make a statement and say, hey, Miss Mary is a vulnerable adult. She is 62 years old. She suffers with Parkinson's disease, and she's not able to perform her activities of daily living. Recently, her caregiver, it is believed, took $50,000 from her. Then that's the report that we could receive. And because we received that report, what will happen is that a report will be forwarded to the county in which, as I said, my person of concern lives. And when they receive that report, an investigator will look at the report, look at all the information that's been provided, then make contact with Miss Mary to verify did the exploit exploitation occur. And when we make contact with her, we're gonna 
asked her if she could provide us with information such as bank statements. Did she speak to anybody else about this? Could she provide the name of the person who exploited her? And if it was her caregiver, it could also be a family, a trusted family member or someone that's in a position of trust. That's the key, position of trust. And when that happens is that we have to go and make contact with our person who's in a position of trust and interview them and find out. And then we're gonna call law enforcement with us. Say, hey, we need you to do a report too. We need you to hear this information because we have a vulnerable adult. We have an adult that's in our community that's being taken advantage of and we don't like that. So we need you to come out and see about it. And we're gonna do jointly, doing an investigation and through that investigation, we will make a determination if exploitation occurred. So I wanna share with you that there are a couple of scams that are going about. And one scam is the Bells Bondsman. This one right here really hit home because someone called my father, as I said, they became very emboldened in COVID. Someone contacted my father and said that my son, who is 19 years old at the time, he's 19 now, but he was 17 and said that my son was beat up. He resisted arrest because he didn't want to take a, a um, alcohol test and now he's in jail. So you can imagine my father is 73 years old. To receive that kind of, that kind of call for him, about his grandson being in jail, the first thing my father was like, something is not right, but I'm concerned about my grandson. Now the person that was on the other side of the phone said, don't call his parents. <laughs> the nerve, right? Don't call his parents and said, I'm gonna call you back in about 15 minutes because we have to go before the judge in a few minutes before his arrangement. Arrangement. Now this is what's interesting to me. In the midst of COVID, now you know nobody wouldn't see nobody. <laughs> the courts weren't really open. But my father contacted me and at first I was just, I was, I was nervous because this is my child. Scammers know how to create a sense of urgency to make you feel scared, okay? And in that moment, I was like, whoa, what's going on? But then I had to move my emotions out of it and then you have to become very logical. And I said, no, 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 no. I work with Adult Protective Services and there are some things that I know. <laughs> I'm about to use it. And then I said, well, so the gentleman said, don't call his parents, but my dad had already called me. So I got on the phone with the gentleman. And I said, hello, I'm his mother. And I says, well, if my son is in jail, what county is he in that he's being held in? Who is the judge that you're going before? Because you're going before an arrangement, so arraignment, so you should know the judge. <laughs> hello. So then I said, oh, I also want the docket number. Remember, I said, truth never doesn't mind you asking questions and giving you the information. So immediately the gentleman hung up. <laughs> I called a police officer, um, he's retired, and he was at my church, and he said, that, he said that scam has been going on for years where they will call seniors and ask them to give money over for a bond. And then when you try to call them back, you can't get in touch with them because there's a phone, it's one of those phones that you can kind of throw away. So be careful, ask the questions. There's nothing wrong with you ask questions. Get a little indignant by it. The next one is the sweetheart scam. There's a sweetheart scam, oh, okay. There's a sweetheart scam when someone calls or they make contact with you and everybody that's in social media, social media whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, they reach out to you and you know they establish a connection, a bond. They say they love bomb. Oh, you're so beautiful. I would like to be with you. And you know, and they, they carry it on for a couple of months, but then after a couple of months, then they start asking for money. Be careful about that. Be careful about 
giving money, giving detailed information about yourself, giving, sending pictures to them. Tell a friend, someone you trust and that you know would say, my brother, my sister, don't do that. Let's, let's, let's logically think some things out. So be very careful with that one. There is another scam that's going around and the IRS scam. Has anybody received any calls? No, the social security one. Yeah. Okay. So you all are testimonies right now. So if you have received calls, a social security call, and someone is saying something about your social security number, once again, ask the questions, okay? Don't give them any information because actually, if they're calling you about your social security number, they shouldn't be saying, well, what's your social security number? No, you should have my social security number. Why are you calling me? So as I said, be, be aware, be alert, and always be on guard because they don't care about you. But your family and your friends, they do. So I'm gonna come to a close right now. I thank you all for this time, but I'm gonna come to a close and we said that we were gonna have a question and answer and we would be gladly to take on any questions. We only have a few minutes, but we'll be glad to answer any questions that you all may have. But I'll say thank you all and I appreciate you very much. Mm -hmm.